that's definitely gas. That's wild. 2012 Ford Mustang with a 3.7 liter engine, 70,000 miles on this car. Customers complaining of a lack of power, running rough. So let me start it up for you and let you have a listen. Check engine light is on. Runs like crap. I had trouble, I actually had trouble starting it to bring it into the shop. It, it was like, uh, it was almost like if the engine was hydro locking itself and I smell I smell gas yeah that engine this engine's running like crap look at the rpm oh anyways check engine lights on let me hook up the scanner see what codes we got uh I'm thinking probably something like a uh, leaking fuel injectors uh, maybe shorted injectors that they're just commanded all the time, spraying too much gas into the cylinders. But we'll see. Let's not jump to conclusions. We'll figure this one out. All right, we got a misfire on cylinder four and five right away. Cylinder six, misfire detected on the startup. O2 sensor, negative current control circuit open. Random misfire. It's a bunch of misfires. Let me, I'm gonna let this finish um, loading up and then we'll go over what the codes are. All right, so we got a 300 random misfire, cylinder four, cylinder five, cylinder six. So one bank, right? Well, I'll check the firing order. Actually, let's go see. Let's go see the firing order for this Mustang. Let's see if I have it in here. It's usually, it's usually in here, but um, ignition, component info. Okay. All right, so one, four, two, five, three, six, firing order. So we got a misfires on cylinders four, five, and six, which is the passenger side, sorry, the driver's side of the engine because that's the front of the engine. So uh, cylinder one, front of engine on the right side, which is over there. All right, so check it out. This is what I'm gonna do. I got a misfire on cylinder four, five, and six, and I got an oxygen sensor code for this bank two, which is on the driver's side. So my thought process is this. I have three injectors on this bank, but these three injectors are controlled separately by different drivers. Is it possible that I have three shorted drivers commanding the injectors to spray on all the time? Highly unlikely. So why do we have misfires on three cylinders? Um, and we have raw fuel coming out of the exhaust. What I'm thinking, um, so what I'm gonna do right now is go hook up my scope. I'm gonna hook up to the control wire on all three injectors. We're gonna compare all three injectors and that's gonna tell us if we have a, a shorted wire, a shorted driver, a shorted injector, and depending on what we see, we'll take it from there. All right, so I'm hooked up right here on bank two, cylinders four, five, and six. And I'm on the control wire. Let's see if I can get that for you a little closer. It's a wire on the right side. That's the control wire for all three cylinders. So I got my yellow channel on cylinder six. I got my blue channel on cylinder five and my red channel on cylinder four. All right, I'm gonna start it, but it's only gonna be a couple seconds because I got leaking fuel. I got raw fuel coming out of the exhaust. So maybe a couple seconds and I gotta go hit stop on the scope. Okay. Go ahead and stop that. Turn this off real quick. Okay, look at this. Let me show you something down here. I don't know if you can see on this exhaust flange right there. Let me zoom in for you. You see how it's wet right there? That's raw fuel coming out of that exhaust. So I'm pretty sure the raw fuel that's being dumped into the exhaust damaged that oxygen sensor. But let's look at the injector waveforms and see what they look like. Okay, so we got some signals here. Let me uh, actually let me see if I can uh, let's go back to one window. I think this will be better. Let me just zoom out on this. Okay. 
so right away we gotta okay, let me show you let me see let me see take it slow okay so this right here how do we have it Let's zoom out one more all right so check it out look right away looking at the waveforms we have the yellow trace the red trace and the green trace so that's cylinder six the red trace is cylinder four and the green trace is cylinder five. Just by looking at this, we know that we don't have shorted injectors because they're all being controlled. They're being grounded by the PCM. That injector's uh, turning on and then uh, the magnetic field is collapsing. You can see all that right here. What I don't see here, look at this. If you look closely, here, let me zoom in right there. We'll go all the way in. This is cylinder six. If you look closely at that injector waveform, if you guys know anything about injectors, there's supposed to be a pinto hump on there, and there's no pinto hump on that injector. If I go to the red trace, here's our red trace. This is cylinder four, injector number four. If you look right there, this area right here, that's where the pinto hump is. That tells you that that injector is opening and closing. So let me look at the green trace now. Okay, there's that green trace. This is cylinder, uh, cylinder five. So cylinder five, you can also see that pinto hump. That injector is opening and closing. So what I'm suspecting is we got a cylinder six. Looking at this one, there's no pinto hump on there. There is no pinto hump on injector number six. I believe injector number six is the one that is stuck open. What I can do is take off the coils since they're just right here. Everything is easily accessible and I can look at the spark plugs and I can pretty much guarantee you that cylinder six, just by looking at this, is our, is our issue. So let me take off these ignition coils, take off the plugs, we'll look at them and uh, then we'll, we'll go from there. But this right here tells us that we don't have a shorted injector, we don't have a shorted driver, our wiring is good. The problem is with one of these injectors and I believe it's cylinder six where our yellow trace is at. So let me take off the coils, remove the plugs and then we'll look at them one by one. All right, so check it out. Here's all the plugs. This is from cylinder four, cylinder five and cylinder six. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but um, cylinder six is a lot cleaner than cylinder five and cylinder four. And this is what they look like, six, five, All right, four. So this car is gonna get that injector replaced. I'm also gonna remove the intake because in order to get that injector off, I gotta take the rail off, which goes around to the other side under the intake. And I'm also gonna be changing spark plugs out in this car. So three spark plugs, you can see how foul they are. The other ones might not be that bad because this is a bank that had the misfire and the rich running condition. So what I'm gonna do right now is take off the intake, take off the injectors, take off the spark plugs. And then I'm also gonna be changing the oxygen sensor that's on this side because that has been damaged because too much fuel was dumping into that exhaust. And then after that, you have to let the customer know that he might need a catalytic converter, but we gotta start here with this. So I'm gonna set you guys up. We're gonna do the intake, take it off and get on some plugs right now. Check it out. This is cylinder one through six right here from left to right. And you can see, well, maybe you can't see, but cylinder six is the cleanest spark plug on here. That's because of all the fuel that's been leaking into that cylinder. It's just pretty much been cleaning it. And that's not necessarily a good thing. So plugs are out. I'm about to take the fuel rail right out and take off that last injector, cylinder number six. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that right now. I'm just waiting for parts, but um, 
the whole rail has to come out. And what I want to try is once I have the rail out, I want to cycle the key on and see what happens with that injector and see if I can show you guys how bad it's leaking. So let me set you guys down. I'll take off the rail and then uh, we'll try that little test out. that are holding it down right there and it, it's pretty stuck in there so you gotta you gotta really fight it to get it out of here i want to go ahead and turn the key on and i want you to see i mean you can already see that injector leaking but you wouldn't think that all that fuel in that exhaust is coming from just one injector right but you got to keep in mind that this is with the car running and with the car running you got about 50 psi on the fuel rail so i left the feed line connected what I want to do right now is just cycle the key on and I want to keep you posted right here so you can see how bad the leak really is. All right, I'm going to leave you right here. I'm going to put this water bottle up in here. I'll leave it right there. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Let me just cycle the key on and we'll see how much fuel we can catch in that, in that, uh, what is that, like a 20 ounce bottle? Here we go. Okay. See, so if I were to hook up a gauge right now, I would see the pressure dropping because this injector's leaking. None of the other ones sprayed. That's a big leak. Now you can imagine with the car running, we have about 50 PSI on the fuel rail. That's where all the fuel is coming from. You didn't see any of the other injectors leaking. So I'm gonna swap that injector out. Then we can put this car back together, put the plugs back in and then get this car on its way. Let's see how much we got. Okay, we got about that much from just one cycle of the key. Now you can imagine the customer cranking it and cranking it, trying to get his car started. None of the others are leaking, but I'm gonna swap it out. All right, let me get this fuel row out. I know it's pressurized and I'm gonna leak some, just took this clip out right here. I'm gonna leak some fuel, but it's okay. What we gotta do is squeeze the top clip and then we can get it out. There it is. Okay, let's go over to the bench and take this injector out, put a new one in there and get it on its way. All right, so once we're here, this is super simple to change out this injector. There's just a little clip you're holding it in. You wanna take that clip out. And then we can take this injector out of here. Come on. beautiful all right now it's just a matter of putting another one back in and putting a new o-ring on there here's a new injector that's going in here it is a motorcraft product so we're going oe on this one yeah. new injector just push it into place and lock it in there there's a little groove here let me show you on the old injector there's a little groove right there where the clip is supposed to go. So make sure you put that in there and you'll be all right so that this injector doesn't come out. But there's nothing to it. The hardest part, the hardest part of this job is just diagnosing it, which wasn't too bad. So injectors in, there it is, it clicked. It's not going anywhere. There it is. So now, I can put this fuel rail back in, put all the new spark plugs back in, and then we can start it up and see how it runs. All right, one other thing before you put the rail back in, you just gotta make sure that all your O-rings are on here on the injectors, cause some of them will get stuck in the intake. So you just wanna make sure that there's nothing stuck in there, clean it out real good. And before you install this back in, make sure to lube them up. This way you can help them guide in and they'll go in with ease and this way they won't tear on you or anything like that. So now it's just a matter of putting everything back in. So let's get to work.
thing I forgot to mention, you might want to consider uh, doing, the, doing the same leak test uh, before installing the fuel rail just to make sure that you don't get a defective injector. But I went ahead and put it on already. I trust Motorcraft, said no one ever. <laughs> and uh, they brought me the wrong spark plugs. Two hours later. All right, check it out. Finally got the correct spark plugs. So now it's just a matter of putting everything back now we can get to work, now we can finish this car and we can start it up and I can show you guys the fix, show you how it runs and then we can go on a little test drive and finish this thing off. So let's get to work. done intake spark plugs coils injectors now I'm gonna start up the car and then we're gonna see how it runs this is a moment of truth right here All right, guys, so we're out test driving the Mustang now. Feels pretty good. It was clearing up all the smoke, so I had to uh, let everything, you know, I had it, I had everything running for about a good 15, 20 minutes, and then after that, everything, it, it's not 100% clear, but the customer has to drive it. And you also gotta let him know, I think I mentioned it earlier in the video, that you gotta let him know that he might have a, a damaged cat in the future because of all that fuel that's been dumping into the exhaust. The last thing you wanna do is do an oil change on the car. You wanna do an oil change because all that raw fuel that's been dumping into the engine, that engine oil is gonna be contaminated. So you wanna do an oil change, change the filter, put fresh clean oil in there, and then you should be good to go after that. And uh, I think I'm gonna end it right here. Hopefully you guys liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that little bell so you get notified when I drop a new video. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.